Hey Comedia Bossom, I'm Gabe and this is Bookish Pixie. So, months ago I told you all that I had a vlog coming, and I did. It's just that when I was editing said vlog, I realized that when I'd been recording, I'd left my window air conditioner on the entire time. So I knew I was gonna have to re-record, but life got in the way, so here we are. That said, you had questions and I still have those answers, so let's get right to it. If you're a completely fresh, first-time novelist, how do you know when your work is ready to be sent off to be looked at? What are things that are common mistakes or that should be avoided? So this is a great question. The very first thing you'll want to do is make sure that the agent you're querying is not the first person outside of your family to look at your work or your query. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Critique partners are so important. Please get critique partners. On top of that, I'd also have your critique partners look at your query letter as well. That said, if you don't have critique partners or your critique partners aren't available to look at your query letter, usually freelance editors will also look at query letters for relatively inexpensive of rates, so that may be an option as well. I'd also add, and this is super basic but so important, follow the agency guidelines when you're querying. Check the querying guidelines for every single agent and agency. They do vary agent to agent and agency to agency. I'll also add if you're looking for querying tips, I do have an entire playlist full of querying tips, so you can take a look at that in the description below. I honestly have two questions. First, what does it mean as an author when you have no trouble creating worlds and characters, but you have difficulty deciding on plot? And second, will you be restarting your editing business that you were running on the side? So for the first part of the question, it means you're like me! <laughs> I joke, but I often, though not always, come up with the characters and the world before I come up with the plot. But that's just how my brain works. Personally, I find plotting to be the most difficult part, uh, but for other people it's going to be different aspects of the writing. So, it's fine, totally normal, nothing to worry about. As for the second part of that question, I am technically still closed. I say technically because depending on when you contact me, I might be able to squeeze in a query letter critique or a first chapter critique, but honestly, no promises. That said, if you reach out to me and I don't have the time in my schedule, I'm always happy to refer you to other freelance editors who do have open slots. Is it a good idea to self-publish one's first finished book, or should I trunk it and move on to something else? assuming that no publishers are interested, naturally. So I can't speak to your particular manuscript, but I can say this. Self-publishing should not be a backup. Self-publishing is hard, and it's expensive. It's a business that you need to take seriously. If you want to self-publish, that means you're going to have to hire a cover designer, someone to format your book unless you can figure that part out yourself, and someone to edit your work, and that adds up. And then, of course, you need to do all of your marketing on top of that. The other thing you'll want to remember is there are no take-backs in publishing. So if you self-publish a book, it is published. What I mean is, if down the road you get an agent, you're not going to be able to publish that first book that you already self-published unless it happens to be massively successful, like Fifty Shades of Grey level of successful. On the other hand, if you trunk the book and then get an agent later on, you can always pull it out of the trunk again, revise it, and get it ready for submission. Ultimately, I think the important thing is to consider your goal. Do you want to be a traditionally published author, a self-published author, a hybrid author? If your goal is to be a traditionally published author, cool, then my advice is to trunk the book and move on. For some context, Beyond the Red was my 10th book that I wrote and the 6th one that I queried. Could I have self-published some of those earlier books? Sure, but I am so glad I didn't because honestly, a lot of them were not that good. On the other hand, if you want to be a self-published author, that is awesome, that's a great and totally valid choice. Just make sure that you're putting your whole heart into it and you're not treating self-publishing like an afterthought. And that's what I got for today. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to subscribe and comment, and I'll see you all soon.